So then what she said was, oh, hang on for just a second. So anyway, what she said was, All right, so here's how we're going to do this. First, we're going to take a raw footage and drop it in here to our editor timeline. And then we're going to make it into a composite shot. All I have to do is right click and say make composite shot, or I can use Control M and click OK. So now that we're in a composite shot, everything that we do in here will be affected on this in the editor timeline. What we want to do now is, is we want to start creating our text bubbles. So I'm going to say new composite shot. And I'm going to call this text bubble one. Okay. So now that I have text bubble one, I'm going to add a few things in here. We're going to start by creating a new plane layer, right? And it's going to be a blue plane. And we're going to actually make it, I know, crazy as it sounds, blue. And we're going to click OK. Now, what we want to do is we want to mask out part of this. So I'm going to use my square mask tool and I'm going to create a square mask basically in this section right here. Okay. And then I'm going to use, if I go under the properties of it, shape, roundness, I'm just gonna slide this over until I get a nice round shape mask. Oh, that does look pretty nice. Okay, now I also wanna have that little arrow pointing thing, so I'm gonna use my handy dandy um, freehand mask tool and I'm just going to like this, okay? And there it is. So now I have the text bubble. Looks pretty good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, draw a text box inside of the bubble. Okay. We want our text to be black so that we can see it. And we want it to start off being about 40 pixels, at least for this demonstration. And then I'm going to type in the name of the person who's doing the text and then the date. And I'm actually just making this up, right? Because it's in the script. Number 32016. And let's make it about 2.12 uh, in the afternoon. I'm going to carriage return a couple times down. And then I'm going to change the font to be a little bigger. And Sue is going to ask, when do you want to have, or to, how about this? go out to dinner tonight question mark ah, so who wants to know don't we all okay so there is your basic text and uh, and bubble outside of it and that's what we're going to use now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and duplicate that so i'm going to say duplicate and this is going to become text bubble number three now, the reason it's text bubble number three is because this is going to be Sue's second text coming back. So what I need to do in text bubble number three, if I double click it, I'll bring it up here on my timeline. Then I can grab this text here. And all I have to do is just change her response. And her response, her second text was, sounds good. And that's it. So now we're, we're done with Sue's text. Now we have to make Joe's text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take text bubble number one and I'm going to duplicate that. Okay. And then I'm going to double click it to bring it up on my timeline. Now this still says Joe, doesn't it? So what we're going to do is we want it to be a black or I mean a white plane. So I'm going to create a new plane, but this one I'm going to call white plane. Okay. And we're going to make it white, of course. And then we're going to draw it underneath the text. Now, we want the exact same bubble look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat and I'm just going to steal the masks effect. So I'm going to highlight them both. I'm going to copy them. And then I'm going to paste them in my white plane. Oh, I just realized I misspelled white. That was good. All right, white plane. So now it's white. But the problem is this little arrow shouldn't be pointing this way. It should be pointing over here. So I'm going to do a little cheat again. I'm going to grab that one mask. And under the transform properties, I'm going to unlink the scale, and I'm just going to make the X scale negative 100%, and poof, it flips over to the other side. Isn't that lovely? All right, now that we've used the now that we've used the stuff from the blue plane, we can just go ahead and get rid of it. And now we have 
Joe's response text here. So now all I have to do is just change a few things. First thing we're going to do is we're going to change the name to Joe. And then Joe is going to say, how about 630? There you go. We only probably need one question mark. Okay. And that's Joe's first one. Okay. And so now in, oh, and that one is actually text bubble number two now. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. And then I'm going to uh, duplicate that. And we're going to call that text bubble number four. And this is Joe's second text or his response to Sue's last text. And he's going to say, excellent. See you then, period. Okay, and there is your text bubbles. Now all we have to do is add them to the original footage. So composite shot, we're gonna go back into that and we're gonna take all of our text bubbles and we're going to drag them in above the footage. And there they are, but they're a little big, right? Of course they are. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to scale them down, each of them to about 30%, okay? About 30% will work. So under the transform properties, scale, just remake that about 30% for all three of them. And then we'll be good to go. 30%. And then last but not least, text bubble number four, transform. And we make this about 30%. Now, all I have to do is I just have to drag these over to where I want them to sort of come in. So the first one, when do you want to go out to dinner tonight? Maybe about a negative 450 on the X axis and then I can just right here oh yeah that looks pretty good right then text bubble number two again we'll go with a negative 450 and we'll just bring him up a little bit because he's gonna end up sliding out to about there looks lovely then text number three again negative 450 and we're gonna bring him down to where he was gonna slide out to I like it. And then text bubble number four, again, negative 450. So they're all stacked on each other in nice alignment. Oh, uh, yeah, it looks good. Okay. Now all I'm going to do is just grab them all. And I'm just going to slide them all clean off the screen. We know it, they're going to come into negative 450, right? Okay. So now all we have to do is just have them slide in at exactly the right time. That's basically what we're going to do. So I can tell you, and I've already moved the timing on this, that these are actually going to come in at certain times. I know what they are, so we don't have to go hunting around for them. The first one's going to slide in at exactly two seconds. So I'm going to keyframe the position at two seconds. I'm going to move forward about 10 frames, and then I'm going to have it slide into its position at 450. Okay. The second text bubble is going to come in at exactly 11, 15, and again, we're going to keyframe the position. I'm going to move forward 10 frames, and then he's going to slide into the negative 450 x axis position. The third text bubble is her response, and it's 14, 15. And I'm going to keyframe the position. I'm going to move forward 10 frames again, and then it will slide into the negative 450. And then last but not least, the, the text bubble for the final one is going to be at exactly 19 seconds. Okay, And I'm going to keyframe that position. And then I'm going to move forward 10 frames. And I'm going to bring him into negative 450 again. And that's it. Now, I need to add my sound effects which is which is the the cell phone going bling bling right so at 11 or sorry at two seconds we'll start at two seconds we're going to have our first sound effect so i'm just going to add it in right there at two seconds and then the sounds good at 14 15 i'm going to add another sound effect so just as this one starts to slide in. There's that sound effect, right? Okay. And then at 21 seconds, I actually want everything to fade out. So what I'm going to do is on the first text bubble, I'm going to keyframe the opacity here. And then I'm going to move forward about 10 frames. And then I'm just going to 
and it's gone, okay? Now I'm gonna cheat, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to 21, and I'm just going to steal these keyframes. I'm gonna highlight them both, copy them both, and then in text bubble two, I'm gonna keyframe the opacity and paste them on there. I'm gonna, in text bubble three, keyframe the opacity and and paste them there and then in text 4 I'm going to do the same as well. So now they will all fade out at exactly the same time. And that's basically it in a nutshell. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.